Jason was originally a righteous police officer. He was kicked out of the police force for reporting his colleague for receiving illegal money. In order to live he had to go to boxing, however, he accidentally crippled a popular boxer. The boss behind the scene lost all his money. When Jason returned home, he found that his wife had been killed by the boss. At this time, Jason did not think of revenge but kneeled in front of his enemy in despair. He is not because of defeat, but has no hope of survival. But the enemy does not intend to kill him. They said they would kill everyone close to him, and they want to make Jason's life worse than death. Although he lost everything he still has a kind heart. To avoid hurting the innocent he stayed in a shelter. A homeless man liked his shoes. Without saying a word, he gave them to him. But the next morning the homeless man had been killed. Now Jason knew someone was following him. He left the shelter fearing that more people would be hurt. When he went to the store to buy something, he realized that his wallet was missing. Then he remembered that he had just been hit by a beggar. It must have been then that he lost his wallet. Jason could not help but laugh bitterly and then was taken away by the police who arrived. The one who arrested him was the dirty cop he had reported before. He took Jason to a broken building. Then he called a group of people to beat him up and kicked him and laughed at him for being a useless loser. After that, he handed Jason a gun and told him to kill himself. But Jason didn't pay attention to it and left silently. He came to the metro station and thought about his miserable experience. He thought that it would be better to die than to live in such pain. So he prepared to commit suicide by lying on the tracks. He slowly approached the edge of the platform. At that moment, a little girl caught his attention. The girl seemed to be hiding from something. There were some strong men searching around. Jason realized that the girl was in danger. Exactly as the girl got on the subway, the strong man followed her. Jason decided to save the girl. He followed the girl to the metro. The girl ran frantically in the carriage, but soon there was no way out. Jason arrived in time to see the strong man about to push the door inside. He grabbed one of them by the neck and threw him to the ground, followed by several kicks as if to let out all the anger in his heart. He caught one of them and hit him hard. One of the guys tried to fight back, and the next second he got a big hit. The leader was about to pull out his gun when Jason grabbed him. He was pinned to the seat and lifted upwards. The leader screamed his heart out. Jason took the wallet of one of them. The girl was terrified by the scene and ran away as soon as the metro arrived. Jason also mixed in the crowd to leave, but the girl just went out and was caught by the dirty cop on the car. Jason arrives again and quickly defeats them. At this time another group of gangsters came. Jason also did not know what the situation. He quickly took the girl to the car. He asked the girl on the way why the gangsters and the police were looking for her. But the girl didn't say anything. The gangsters behind her were still in pursuit. Jason drove the car to a thick smoke. When the enemy came after them, they found that the front was blocked. Before they could react, Jason suddenly came out from the side. He shot and killed one of them, using him as a shield. He quickly killed two more. Then he used the purse he stole to buy himself a suit. He took the girl to a safe hotel. The girl was saved twice in a row by Jason, which gained her trust. It turned out that the girl's name is Amy. She was born with the ability to remember everything. This talent was seen by the gangster Wong because he never believed in computers. He gave Amy a slip of paper with numbers written all over it. He told Amy to remember them all. Amy just looked at it and said she had it all in her mind. Wong was happy to hear it and destroyed the numbers. Then Amy was transferred to other places. Unexpectedly, they were ambushed by another gangster. The other gang quickly finished off several people and took Amy away. The man who took Amy away was named Bear. He was also the local leader of the gang. They threatened Amy to tell them the numbers. Unexpectedly, the police arrived at that moment. Amy slipped away down the drainage pipe when they weren't looking. That's when she met Jason at the metro station. After finding out what happened, Jason guessed that the numbers might be the combination to the safe. In the meantime, the two gangs have arrived at the hotel and there was a gun battle here. Jason heard the commotion and asked Amy to write out the series of numbers. Then they were ready to leave the hotel, but the place is full of gangsters men. Jason had to fight to the death. The scene was in chaos. Amy was also caught by Wong's guys. Jason could not care so much about this could only save his life first. He grabbed a man on his back and jumped out of the hotel. Then he grabbed a passing car and ran away. Then he went to Bear's bar. This time he was going to take the initiative. The man came to the bar and did not order a drink. Instead, he ordered a fork. Although the waiter looked confused, he still handed it to him. Jason picked up the fork and quickly stabbed the man on the side, followed by two shots to kill another man. Then he left to take out a bald man. After Jason took care of the bar boy, he took Bear's son with him. Then he phoned Bear. He threatened him with the location of the safe. Bear told him the safe was in a nightclub. It contained $20 million but was heavily guarded. Jason knew he wouldn't be able to get in on his own. So he called the dirty cops. They said they could share the money with them and agreed immediately. To prevent them from playing tricks Jason took a note of the password in person. So that only he knows the password. Then a group of people ready to go with their own ulterior motives. After arriving at the bar, a few people started to work directly. The black police officers are more ruthless than the other. Jason was also on fire. Soon all the guards inside were taken care of. Several people successfully found the location of the safe. To avoid them shooting in the back, Jason told them to throw their weapons on the ground. Only then did he start to crack the code himself. But at the last moment he suddenly stopped and turned around to quickly kill his teammates. 
Only the captain was left alive and forced him to open the safe. It was filled with a lot of money, and there were a lot of police outside. Jason used the captain as a cover to leave the scene without a hitch. Through the captain, he learned that the money belonged to Wong, he was going to use the money to make a deal with the mayor. Jason then found the mayor, the mayor also told the whole story, when he was the police chief, he gave the dirty money to a gangster, that's why he became the mayor, now he is about to retire and wants to get some money for his retirement, so he put all the evidence on a CD, sold to Wong for 20 million, and the person who sent the deal was the mayor's secretary. Jason called him up, he said he had the money and asked him to trade it for Amy. The secretary agreed, he then found Wong's staff and brought Amy back. The next day, the secretary brought Amy to the trading place. When they saw Jason coming, the secretary pointed a gun at Amy and forced him to give up the money, but Jason said he would tell him where the money was if he could beat him. Then both of them put down their guns, they were ready for a fair fight, as they were setting up their stance, but Amy suddenly attacked the secretary. Finally Jason rescued Amy. At the end of the story Jason released Bear's son, and gave $50,000 to the captain to treat the shoulder injury. Then he gave the rest of the money to Wong, to ensure that he does not look for trouble with Amy and himself. Otherwise, the evidence of his crime would be made public, while Jason took Amy and started a new life.